Welcome everybody to GAN Theft Auto. What you see here is me playing inside of a neural networks environment. This neural network was trained by watching a bot play Grand Theft Auto 5 on this particular stretch of highway, learning how to generate new frames from previous frames and player input. So every pixel you see here is generated from a neural network while I play. While generating the visuals or just improving them is interesting too, and there has been some interesting work lately with neural networks improving the visuals with Grand Theft Auto V in particular in attempts to make it look more photorealistic, this is something much more than that. The neural network in this case is the entire game. It's handling what happens when you press a key to turn left or right. There are no rules written here. Uh, by us or the original Grand Theft Auto engine. The neural network is controlling all of this, along with what happens when we try to turn into another car, when we hit a wall, or what objects in the background should do, what the light reflection should do. It's doing all of this based on our inputs. It's the visuals, the controls, the physics. It's everything. We are playing entirely within a neural network's representation of Grand Theft Auto V. So we're used to seeing AI playing within environments, but here the AI is the environment. It's just a model that we're running with Python that takes key presses from me, the player, and outputs pixel values. We've also added on top some super sampling to make things look a little less pixelated than they are natively. So you can see the native in the kind of bottom middle screen there. The other neat thing here is Gan Theft Auto runs pretty much on any machine that does matrix math and has a display hooked up. It doesn't really matter what your operating system is or other underlying software beyond a GPU acceleration. So where did this all come from? This is a project of Daniel Kukiela and myself based on NVIDIA's GameGAN. I'll put a link to all this in the description, uh, but besides this page, also the paper itself uh, from the initial research. Uh, this game GAN research is kind of a step beyond purely using GANs, you know, to take key presses and generate frames. There's other things going on here, like static versus dynamic things, being able to leave an environment and come back and have the state uh, remembered. So we've kind of just barely scratched the surface based on what we did, but we were just just trying to play around. So from the moment I saw uh, the the Pac-Man video. Uh, I just, I had to play in the environment. I wanted it so bad, but the code and the models and even the data to train a model was not really made available for quite some time. And then finally the code came out, but there were no models or data. So with no data nor model, we needed our own. We started off trying to mimic the OpenAI gym cart pole environment where you just balance a pole on a cart. Results here started off questionable and ended that way too. The model had a hard time learning this one. We thought maybe it was because the point of the game is to move as little as possible, so the pole moves as little as possible. But later we thought it might be actually how the bot played and generated the data for us for training. So we might wind up revisiting this one later just to find out the answer to that question. So we needed something probably a little more custom suited to our needs and we didn't really know of any out of the box environment to use. But we did have a Daniel, and he proceeded to make a game that we called Vroom, based pretty obviously visually on OpenAI's car racing environment, but this was written entirely from scratch for our specific needs and purpose. But this would be probably a much better environment since there would always be movement and a lot more turning going on, and probably just be easier for, for GameGAN to understand. So actually training these models is fairly GPU memory intensive. So we started off training on the box machines to RTX 8000s and it went actually okay. I posted some of the preliminary results to Twitter and this was again, like one of the very first outputs. So it's, yes, it's a little foggy and grainy and stuff, but we're, we are pressing keys. The car is turning, even the little wheels are turning. Uh, we were very excited to see this. It let us know that we are indeed on the right track, pun intended. So then a couple of days later, after some further training, I posted the following results. The pavement sort of moves a little bit. The grass sort of moves a little bit. We're definitely still improving. A lot less fogginess. Uh, we can leave the track. We can turn around, come back on the track. The wheels are still turning. We could even go, we'd go pretty far off track, then turn around and come back to the same track. So that was really cool. I and mean, overall, we were just really ecstatic to, to see this. Again, this is... 
This is us playing inside of a neural network's environment. It is dictating where the road is. All the pixel values, the turning, everything is dictated by this neural network. So this is just, I don't know, it's just so cool uh, to see. So around this time, uh, NVIDIA reached out and suggested that possibly I could check out their new DGX station A180 gigabytes, which has four of the A180 gigabyte cards for a total of 320 gigabytes of VRAM. So it became clear that, hey, we could we could maybe take this a step further. So the question became, okay, what is the next reasonable step that, that we could take from here? And of course, as you probably could guess, uh, the next reasonable step was modeling Grand Theft Auto V. I came up with the name Gan Theft Auto, and basically, uh, with a name like that, you really can't fail. So we just needed a lot of data and as quickly as possible. I wasn't going to have the DGX station for forever, so we needed to figure out how to make the best of the time that we had. And playing GTA manually to collect the data really wasn't going to be an option because it would take us months to, to get enough. So again, Daniel stepped in to bend GTA to his will and created a rules-based AI to drive around GTA and collect the data. But again, time was still an issue, so not just one, as many as we could fit. <laughs> so here we have 12 AI all driving around in the same game instance and actually on the same stretch of road. They're all here together, it's just the other cars are invisible and clipping through each other. So here you can see with all the cars visible uh, what's going on. So once we had a good helping of data to train with, we trained our first model. And here's the result after six epochs of training. So while this is indeed very pixelated, this is very clearly Grand Theft Auto V. You can see the action in the upper left. This is the live key presses as I play the game in real time. Notably, we also see shadows of the car, light reflections on the back window, and even the background moves as we turn. Things are looking really impressive. So impressive that I was like, okay, I guess we gotta ratchet this up even further. The first model that we trained didn't include any real boundaries, so in the actual training data we didn't hit walls or anything like that. So if you drove into a wall in the inference, uh, the model would just get very confused very fast, but in theory GameGAN should be able to learn these hard boundaries and how to properly react when hitting something like a wall or this like barrier on the highway. Given our successes up to this point, along with adding colliding into walls, we thought, why not also add other cars, including some collisions even with those? We thought it was probably best to keep the number of types of cars minimal, so we went with just police cars, and Daniel once again went to work showing GTA who was boss by figuring out how to spawn in police cars. But this wasn't without some struggle. But eventually, Daniel continued with his GTA 5 domination, and we were back on track with some more training data. And this is what created our latest GAN Theft Auto model, which is what you saw in the beginning, though of course this is still quite a bit more pixelated. So what's the difference? The difference is super sampling. So this is the initial output from the model, and then some quick initial training steps, and then the rest of the training in much quicker succession. So this is actually one of the... 30 super sampling models that we ended up training. Uh, this is just the one that we ended up choosing as what we thought was the best looking one of them all. Uh, this is times eight super sampling, so a pretty considerable super sample going on here. Um, so it's pretty impressive considering the base image that we had to start from. This is the original image, and this is the upsampled version of that. So that's a pretty considerable change. Altogether, we have at least our first version of GAN Theft Auto completed. Some things to note that I think are pretty cool are the wall collisions did eventually work to the point at least where the car approaches the wall, hits the wall, and then is like forced you know, to turn straight and, and kind of uh, slide against the wall. So I think that modeling of physics is actually kind of cool. We didn't really know if that would work or not, and it turns out it would. So that was pretty neat to see. Other things are like the uh, window sun reflections, like we already kind of pointed out, and just the general lighting of the area around where the sun is. So it's not just the window. You can actually see that the sunlight hitting that kind of matte finish on the car is also being modeled, and, and it moves as the car moves. Uh, that is 
that's just so cool. And uh, along the lines of this kind of light casting and all that, you also have the car's shadow. And again, the shadow works as you would expect. So again, these are kind of like physics concepts that aren't really cool and, you know, or impressive in your typical video game these days. But the fact that a neural network model is doing this and doing it pretty accurately uh, is, I think, pretty impressive to, to see that it's doing all these dynamic things. So another thing that it's doing is in the earlier models, this wasn't happening. And then I don't know exactly which model. So just like we trained like 30 super samplers, we trained quite a few game GAN models to try to get, you know, improve results and so on. And uh, in one of the later models, I noticed that, wow, as you travel along the road, the background, so the mountains and stuff in the background actually is coming closer to you just at the correct pace, right? Um, again, this is really cool. I, I just, I never expected that that would be modeled, um, at all, but it, but it was, and it like just really blew me away. Like that we were able to, um, again, just have this neural network model model that because yeah, that's, that's not really impressive in your traditional kind of game engine and an environment that you might build with 3d environments are very well advanced, but in terms of doing this with a neural network model, um, that's really cool. Um, another neat thing is just the vehicle roll. So when you turn, you know, the horizon kind of rolls a little bit. So it's, you know, obviously we're looking at this car in third person, but in Grand Theft Auto, when you kind of turn the car, it gives you, you know, as you're playing the perspective that the car kind of rolls a little bit. It's just this little subtle detail. But again, this was picked up by the uh, Grand Theft Auto model here and um, it worked quite well. So overall, I, I think I think it did really well here. I mean, this is definitely Grand Theft Auto V, uh, only it's completely generated for us by an AI and we get to play within it. And that is just incredibly awesome to me. Our training data only consisted of a small section of that highway. We never actually found any limitation there in terms of how big the roam range could be. I would have liked to try uh, training on a much larger range or just, you know, just incrementally increase it so that we could find what, what is the roaming range here? Like how big of an environment could we model, uh, before maybe we have to make the model bigger, make some changes and so on. So we really don't know. Um, I would have liked to have tested that along with doing more work on car collisions and just having other cars work. We had a, a pretty hard time with that. So, so more work there for sure. But I definitely think adding a bigger roaming range was kind of a low hanging fruit that we just didn't have time to do. On the topic of vehicles and vehicle collisions, we had fairly interesting results, including one example where the GAN handled a collision with a police car by simply splitting the police car into two. <laughs> For the most part, the model is clearly confused and fuzzy with what to do with cars, often just simply disappearing them. But there were examples where we could interact with other cars somewhat correctly. So here you can see two windows. The left is the default GAN Theft Auto output. The right is an upsample. You can see the live key presses at the top left of that GAN output window. And you can see here how we're unable to, to turn through the other car when it is in the way. Despite trying to go left, we continue to just kind of be dragged along straight and we can even see that the police car rotates a bit if i hit it closer to the rear wheel the you know pit maneuver doesn't complete but we can see it's starting to go in the correct direction but eventually the police car just disappears altogether I think there's probably a lot more that could be done here and arguably, um, you know, we really only worked on this project for maybe like a total of two months put together and cumulatively. Uh, and, and neither of us came to this knowing much at all about working with GANs. So overall, um, I'm super pleased with, with our outcome here. Um, but I definitely think there's a lot of more interesting things that, that can happen here. And I mean, I kind of think there's no reason that we won't have a future where uh, many game engines are entirely or even mostly AI based like this, or even things like operating systems or in other programs. Um, I even have some like real life simulating that I would like to test with th this kind of model structure, maybe call it MVGAN or something, something other than GameGAN. Um, so maybe stay tuned for that at, at a some point, but, but m things like modeling physics. So like this model learned to model Grand Theft Auto's modeled physics, but could it have just as well learned to model maybe some basics, uh, some basic real life physics? Um, that would be 
really cool because uh, video game physics is kind of one of those areas that we are kind of weak at. So anyways, lots of cool things and maybe stay tuned for some IRL GAN <laughs> or something like that. Uh, huge thank you to NVIDIA for putting the research out there and also lending us the awesome DGX station to help us do the R&D at like warp speed. And finally, like me, like I said, I'm sure that many of you will wish to play with the models that we've we've got here. We're going to be hosting the base scan theft auto model, um, so the one that I'm actually playing here, along with the super sampler. Uh, we really made no effort to make this run super efficiently in inference, so your mileage may vary in the frame rate that you're able to actually get, but I think many of you will be capable of playing uh, the current version so there will be a link in the description to the uh, github and the models and some basic training data for you guys to try your own models if you want the full training data set is a bit large for me to uh, host but if you can train something that looks promising share it with us we'd probably be happy <laughs> to to train it for you on the full data set so if you do have something interesting uh, feel free to reach out to us um, anyway that is all for now. I hope you all found this as fascinating as we did, and maybe more on this concept to come in the future if you guys want to see more of it. Thanks for watching, and until next time.